friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one. Last week, I happened to see an open invitation from Simone and Leanne Likes, both on YouTube, to participate in an 8 Pen Questions community event that they are hosting for the second year in a row. To participate, they have drafted eight questions for everyone who wants to participate to answer. I can't wait to watch other people's videos and see how they responded to the questions. And I'm equally excited to contribute my responses as well. I thought it was really good timing, especially since I recently shared my own fountain pen collection video. and. A lot of these things are top of mind. So if that sounds interesting to you, please settle in with a coffee, tea, or your favorite cozy beverage. Do whatever you need to do to get comfy. I have my tea with a little bit of milk ready to go. And before I begin, I have my final update for Inco Rimo this year. This week, I mailed off my last set of letters to the subscribers who signed up to receive a letter. And also, as promised, I have deleted all of the mailing addresses that you shared with me. Thanks again for trusting me with your address. I had so much fun putting together those letters and I hope that you'll have received all of them by mid to late March. And if receiving a letter from me is something that you would be interested in in the future, keep an eye out on the community tab because that's where I would post an invitation to sign up to receive a letter. I don't currently have Instagram and I don't have any immediate plans to get an Instagram account. So the community tab really is the best place to double check. Okay, well, let's get into the eight pen questions. The first question is, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? I did post a video not too long ago where I talked a lot about my fountain pen collection and how I got started, but the short answer is I had been buying pen refills for these Muji plastic pen bodies and I was excited at the idea of upgrading the pen body and investing in a fountain pen. And I was even more excited at the idea of being able to customize the type of ink that I could put in the pen body so that I could venture out beyond Muji's standard ink options. So the first pen that I ever got was this Kaveco Sport in the Macchiato color that I currently keep in my wallet. And the first ink I ever got was Ferris Wheel Press's writing desk. What were your favorite inks in the beginning? And what are your go-to inks now? My favorite ink was the first ink that I ever purchased, which was this writing desk. I was so used to using blue, black, green, and red inks that the idea of using a warm brown was so intriguing for me. And the fact that this was an ink collaboration by one of my favorite Toronto stationery stores and a Canadian ink brand was really exciting to me. And so I purchased this and I picked this colorway of my pen because I thought it would be a really beautiful match of a brown ink with a brown pen. Writing Desk continues to be a mainstay in my collection and I've tried it I think in all of my pens at this point. I really love this ink. In my pencil case I've always had a black, blue, and green pen and so when I started getting into the world of fountain pens I really wanted to find an equivalent black, blue, and green ink that I would feel really excited to use on a regular basis. So in terms of blue, my choice is Asagao by um, Pilot Irishizuku. When I started researching blue inks, I had heard 
that pilot inks are some of the best and I was really excited. I started off by getting a few different samples from Wonder Pens. So I tried Con Pecky, I tried Ama Iro, Ajisai, and Asagao. And they're all really lovely blues. I was really looking for a royal blue that reminded me of my paper mate ballpoint pens that I used to use a lot when I was younger. And as soon as I inked up my pen with Asagao, I just fell in love. It's this really wonderful bright blue that contrasts so nicely on white and cream paper. It is a joy to write with. I fell in love with it so much that I ended up picking up my one and only full bottle of Ira Shizuku ink. When it comes to my ideal blue ink, it is this one. And what I really like about it is it feels great in every fountain pen that I've used. It just glides across the paper, which makes note taking faster and much more enjoyable. Lately, I haven't been using it as much because I have been distracted by the plethora of ink samples that I've been working my way through, but I will always go back to blue at some point when I'm taking notes, and this one is my favorite one so far. When it comes to green, the next ink is Sailor Shikiori Rikucha. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it is a gorgeous brown green. And I think green inks are definitely some of my favorite inks to experiment with, that and brown. And I'm still experimenting my way through different green inks that catch my eye. This one is so interesting because it is a mix of brown and green. I've tried it in almost all of my pens at this point as well. I look forward to rotating it through my pens again so that I can log them in my ink log now that I've started one of those as well on the side. And then the last ink is Platinum Carbon Black. So it may not be the most exciting ink, I suppose, but it's definitely the most functional one. And it's currently the most used ink in my collection. So I use this ink every day. It's currently inked up in my Pilot finishing point and there's just so many different ways that I can use this ink whether it's note taking whether it's sketching it's just a really versatile ink and I love that it is waterproof so it's at the top of my list how have your ink and pen tastes changed over time as I mentioned just now, I started out really wanting to find perfect blue, black, and green inks that I could use for my daily note taking and journaling, which were primarily what I was using pens for. And I thought there were enough options in the blue, green, brown, and black families that that would keep me busy for ever. And I also thought that that would, by condensing down the types of colors I was interested in, it would help me maintain a little bit of control over what inks that I sampled. And honestly, discovering the world of brown inks have brought me so much joy. It's one of my favorite colors to journal with, and I love seeing how different brown inks look on white paper versus cream paper. I think the brown on the cream paper is such a lovely color combination and I really do love it. So not only have I been starting to broaden outside of just brown, green, and blue inks, so I've been really enjoying um, pink. I've also been enjoying like sampling a couple of purples and just different colors that I wouldn't normally have reached for. I like finding colors that are more on the warm side and are in that like have a lot of brown properties to them. And then the other thing that I've been really interested in is discovering inks that have really lovely shading or sheening properties. While I really enjoy shimmer inks and I think they are so pretty, I am wary of using them because most of my pens are either extra fine or fine nibs and I do worry about clogging. So when I look for an ink sample that I wanna try 
I mainly look for ones that have really high shading or really interesting sheens to them. I would say that's how my ink and pen tastes have changed over time. And I will say too that initially I was very much into extra fine and fine nibs because I was primarily getting fountain pens for functional purposes like taking notes or just doing pure writing in my journals. But now that I've been exploring different properties of inks, I have been branching out into different nib sizes. And so the other day I actually picked up a broad nib to replace my fine nib in this Kaveco Brass Sport. I love that I didn't have to buy a new pen, but I just had to pay about $20 to get a new nib. And now if I'm curious about exploring ink properties with a broader nib, I can use this pen for that. I also got this Vanishing Point in a medium nib for the same reason, it's just to be able to see more ink properties when I'm writing with them. So I would say maybe my tastes have changed a little bit in that I'm venturing a little bit into the ink is fun kind of territory and I'm really enjoying these classic colors for note taking because I think it just adds a little bit of extra interest in what can sometimes be a bit of a tedious task. Are there other inks and pens that you have yet to try but would like to? From an ink perspective there are a few inks that have really caught my eye and I would love to try. At the top of my list at the moment, I would say that's Robert Oster Cafe Crema, Robert Oster Bronze, and Birmingham Penco Eroded Bronze. So very firmly in that warm brown, bronze, brassy kind of color family, and I would love to try them. So I don't have any plans on getting any new pens at the moment because I'm quite satisfied with my collection. But the few pens that have tempted me and caught my eye uh, are the Yoseka Stationery Home Pen. I would be really curious to try that in a medium fine nib. Another one is the Esterbrook SD in Tortoise with the gold trim. And then the final pen that really caught my eye recently is the Bennu Euphoria Fountain Pen in Earl Grey. I love the concept, I love tea, and it was such a stunning sparkly pen that it took a lot of willpower to not pick one up, but I resisted and I'm proud because honestly I, I don't feel like I really need it. So those are the three that I would say I'm interested in trying, but I have no immediate plans on acting on those interests or impulses. What is your holy grail pen? I've talked about this pen so many times on my channel and I probably will continue to because I love it that much, but I would say it is my black pilot vanishing point with gold trim. I don't know if I really have a holy grail pen because I would say that this is a pretty standard pen that you can buy at any time that you want. It's not really a special edition or I didn't really eagerly pursue it, I suppose. I just I fell in love with the functionality of this pen and also it checked a lot of boxes like it had the gold trim and it was a very classic color pairing that I didn't think I would get sick of. So I don't know if I would really classify anything else as my holy grail pen, but I will say that this is my all-time favorite pen and I love this pen. I use it every day happily and it just makes what could sometimes be tedious or mundane tasks like note taking or studying so much more enjoyable because the experience of using this pen is so great. How many pens do you currently own? I touched on this in my last video but I have 11 active, I would call them active fountain pens. no particular order. I have 11 active pens and I have four inactive vintage fountain pens that my parents gifted to me. So two of them are here. One of them is currently with a pen restorer and he's 
currently trying to see if he can help me restore the pen so I can use it. And then one is in the box still because it's a pen that my mom gave to me and never used. I have it tucked away. It's a gorgeous pen, but it's, it's very skinny. And I think just realistically, I've learned that I prefer a bit more of a wider pen. Sometimes even the Decimo isn't quite as comfortable to hold for long periods of time compared to something like my Vanishing Point. So I don't know if I'm going to use that pen, but I do have it in my collection because it was gifted to me. So in total, 15 pens. I guess 16 if you count something like this dip pen. Do you have a limit on pens or inks in your collection? Is it a number? Is it a feeling? When do you know that you have reached your maximum? I will say right now, it feels like I have too many pens. I think my preference would be if I could use all of my pens on a regular basis so they were all inked and used at the same time. But with 11 pens or 15, if I got around to cleaning and using the vintage pens that my parents gave me, that would just be way too overwhelming. When it comes to taking notes or studying, for example, I'm probably using maybe three ink colors, one for like primary notes and then maybe another color for headings and then another color for like certain words that I want to stand out. So really I'm just using three. I dedicate one of my pens for journaling now, which I think is a great way to consistently use a pen on a regular basis. I've thought about dedicating a certain pen to my five year Hobonichi Techo. So that's another option. So that's just say that's three pens. And then I have one pen that I keep in my wallet, which doesn't get a ton of use, but it is always really handy to have a pen in my purse with me. So I like that. And we're still really just sitting at five. Right now, I have these three pens inked up. I think my ideal on a daily basis is probably somewhere around like this many pens. These three for every day, and then these two long form writing. From a pen perspective, I've hit my limit and I've exceeded it, I would say, just because I like to keep that momentum up and to use my pens and enjoy and cherish my pens on a regular basis. As for inks, I would say that I don't have like a limit in mind for the inks that I own. I definitely have a lot more ink samples than I do full bottles of ink. And I would say that I'm not opposed to adding new inks that I really enjoy to my collection, but I would prefer that it would be an ink that I could see myself using in all of my pens, which is why something like shimmer inks aren't really on my list because I have used a couple of my shimmer inks in some of my more affordable pens and they have clogged up my nibs. And so that helps me kind of narrow the list down because a lot of the shimmer inks catch my eye, but I'm able to talk myself out of getting them because if I'm not enjoying using them in the pen, then they're just gonna sit in the bottle and then I know I'm gonna feel guilty about having that ink in my collection and not using it. I wouldn't say that I really have a limit, but I do have decision criteria. And the other thing that I, I don't wanna do anymore is bulk buy ink in order to save on shipping because I would say for quite some time, my collection was very minimal and I felt like it wasn't overwhelming. And then there was a Black Friday sale with Ferris Wheel Press and I had been eyeing some of their inks for a while. So I took advantage of that sale and I think I bought eight inks and that just like doubled my ink collection overnight. And now whenever I add a new ink to my collection, it starts to feel overwhelming because I really wanna give each of the inks that I've invested in enough of a chance to try with all of my different pens and different applications like long form writing and uh, note taking and that kind of thing. And so I do regret 
that. Even though I have enjoyed a lot of the inks that I purchased and I had been adding them to my wish list for quite some time before I finally made that purchase. But I think moving forward, I won't be doing that again. Uh, different story with ink samples because they're so small. I don't mind getting a lot of them at once, but ink bottles, not so much. Okay, and the final question is, consequently, what would you do if another pen or ink came along? So as I just mentioned, I have a lot less control over the inks that I purchase, and I would say I'm less strict overall when it comes to picking up inks. So how I'm attempting to manage my ink collection moving forward is first, I always try to prioritize getting an ink sample if that is available to me. And if it's not, that might be enough for me to say, I'm just not gonna try it because it's a lot to risk just getting the bottle. And then I try to look through my current collection and see if there's a current ink that I can almost get excited about all over again to override that desire to try something new and, and experiment with another ink. And then I'm also trying not to fall prey to free shipping limits because while shipping is expensive and it is really tempting to have a higher cart in order to offset shipping that you'd be paying for anyway, it, it just results in bulk purchases and I don't really want to grow my ink collection exponentially so I'm trying instead to just focus on inks that I can buy in person and I know that that immediately shrinks the pool of inks that I can try because some inks that I see online are not available in my local retailers or they're not available as ink samples but I think that just gives me a few extra opportunities to pause and see if I could be okay without getting that ink in the first place. I wouldn't stop myself from getting a new ink bottle if I really wanted to but I do have some guardrails in place to slow down that desire to get a new bottle of ink and take a step back and see if it's something that I could see myself using and envision using it in multiple different pens. Actually, a good example is inks that might be legible with certain nibs and then risk being illegible in a different nib. So I've talked about Lady Rose before. That's one ink that I probably regret the most buying because it looked so interesting on the website but using it in some of my pens especially when I was long form journaling sometimes I couldn't even see what I had written in the moment because I sometimes journal in the morning when it's not quite light outside and that was kind of enough for me to not really want to use the ink again so I am going to try it in a broader nib as someone suggested to me in the comments in another one of my videos. So I am gonna try it out and maybe it'll just be an ink that I use in broader nibs, but I would prefer to use an ink that I enjoy using in all of my pens. As for pens, I suppose if one of my pens got damaged, like one of my nibs got damaged or a pen got lost and needed to be replaced, then I would consider adding another pen to my collection. Or if I came across a situation where a pen would have a lot of sentimental value, so either it was gifted to me or I was traveling somewhere and I happened to come across a pen that I could only get in that place that I was traveling to, then those are some reasons that I would purchase it or if that pen would provide me with a completely unique writing experience that I couldn't already get from my existing collection. So maybe like a really cool nib that I wanted to try. Those are the things that I would consider. So we are planning on visiting Japan in the near future. And I have asked myself if I would consider buying a pen while I'm there. And I haven't come to a definitive 
answer yet because you know, I already feel like I have too many pens, but it's something to think about because if I'm in Japan anyway and I come across a pen that I couldn't buy in Canada and it would always remind me of my trip there, maybe I would justify it, but this is all hypothetical for now, so don't have to make any immediate decisions. Those are some of the ways that I could see myself adding another pen to my collection or another bottle of ink. All right, so we are coming to the end of the video and I thought it would be fun to take a look at these inks now that they've had some time to dry. And as a side note, I think it's hilarious. This is the second time I've done this. I meant to do this ink swatch on today's date, but I put my bookmark randomly on May the 17th. And so because I wasn't paying close enough attention, I ended up just using this day in the future. I think it's kind of funny. So I'll probably just add a date here just to remind myself of my antics. So taking a quick look at these inks, this was the Ferris Wheel Press writing desk. And you can see, or I don't know if you can see because of the lighting, there is a bit of a green sheen to it. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if that helps. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a green sheen. This one is Pilot Irishizuku Asagao. I just love the way it looks. I, I would say this doesn't really have a lot of shading, but I really love how punchy and bright it is. Very royal blue, but it's very different from black. So if I'm taking notes, I can definitely tell the difference. And this blue will stand out a lot against this black so I really love that and then this one is the Sailor Shikiori Rikucha and I don't know if you can tell I'm clearly really bad at showing swatches but this one is just this really interesting green and brown so there's this darker brown sheen and when you write with it you can actually see like both of those colors coming through which I think is so fabulous and then finally, here's the Platinum Carbon Black, just a standard black ink. I think there's another Platinum Black that's even more black than this one, but I really love this one. I think it's great. It's a really great everyday ink, and I think it's so versatile because it is water resistant, if not completely waterproof. So that is all that I had for this video. Simona and Leanne, thank you so much for setting up this invite and giving us an opportunity to contribute to this really cool community event that you have hosted. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what some of your go-to inks are and if you have any brown or green inks with lots of sheening or shading that you would recommend for me to try next. If you enjoy this video, please head on over to Maria's channel at Maria Rousseau to watch her responses to eight pen questions. I'll also leave a link to the eight pen questions one year anniversary hot playlist in the description so you can check out everyone else's responses to these questions as well. I'm so excited to watch everyone's videos and admire all the pretty pens and take notes on inks that I'm excited to try. If you're still here, thanks so much for sticking around and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye!